In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at the terminal. We'll learn some very basic commands, how to move around, how to copy and move files, how to look at directory listings, as well as view some files and learn about tab completion. These are all very basic, important commands to know when navigating and moving around in the terminal. Now the terminal application, which is, as you can see, open now on the main desktop, is a way to access the underlying system underneath the fancy graphical user interface. It's a way to access the guts of the Linux system. And it can be somewhat intimidating and scary at first, but the Ubuntu system is very good at setting things up such that people cannot really make major mistakes. In other words, because Linux is a true multi-user environment, it has very good protections in place. Most files on the system are protected and can only be accessed by the root user, or it's also called the administrator user, or by your regular user using a special command and entering in a password. In other words, most system files are locked down. And so uh, it's, it's not very easy to delete massive parts of the system and make the system inoperable. It's possible, but it's not easy. And so one should not feel too worried about moving around in the terminal while while one's learning about how to use it. And again, the terminal can be very handy for, for certain instances, certain making certain corrections and changes to the system. And it really is something that most people need to use at some point in their in their Linux in their Linux usage. Now when the terminal is first run here in the main desktop environment, it 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 start it begins in the home folder, and one can tell by looking at the prompt. The prompt here has several pieces of information: the username at, and then the name of the computer. So we have Joe at Joe dash desktop, and then after the colon we have the tilde sign. The tilde looks like this. The tilde is a shifted character next to the number one on a U.S. keyboard, and it stands for home. It stands for the home folder. In other words, it's the equivalent of what we're looking at right here, which is home. As you can see, we have Joe's home folder highlighted. It would be the same thing if we click this home button. It re just refreshes. We are in the home folder using the Nautilus file manager. We are also in the home folder here in the terminal. Now, the very first command before anything else is ls, and that stands for list. So we can see ls shows us a list of files and folders in our home. And as you can see, we have desktop, examples, new database, and wallpapers. Those are the exact same items here. Desktop, examples, wallpapers, new database. The colors mean certain things as well. Generally, the color blue, such as desktop and wallpapers, mean folders or other directories. So we can see that desktop is a directory and wallpapers is a directory. Examples is also a directory, but you can see here using the graphical environment that it's locked. It's a protected directory. And that's what the light blue means. Examples is light blue. And then plain white are regular files. Let's take another look at how this works. Let's use the text editor in applications and accessories to create a very basic text document. And we'll just call it something very simple. And we will save it here in our home folder and then take a look at it. So we will say the quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. And we will save this. And we can see that we're saving it in Joe, which is our home folder. And we're going to call this as fox.txt. And we will click save. And now let's close out of our text editor. And we can now see the fox.txt file here in our graphical environment. And doing another ls, we now also see the fox.txt file here in our home folder. Now, the next command that we might want to know how to, how to do is to copy. Let's say we want to make a copy or a backup of the fox.txt file. Well, of course, in the graphical environment, we can we can do we can right click and do a copy and then we can click over here and do a right click again and do a paste and there it says fox dash copy and let's let's rename this we'll call it fox dash backup dot txt so now we've made a very simple copy of fox dot txt using our graphical file manager but 
it's somewhat complicated. We had to right click. We had to go to copy. We had to right click again. We had to paste. We had to rename. It's fairly, you know, a fair number of steps that are involved. Well, let's do an LS so we can see that we have the backup there. So we have Fox dash backup. Let's make another backup using a command CP for copy. And this, this I think shows the power of using the terminal, how easy this is. It's very simple. Copy. We're going to name, we're going to list the name of the file that we want to make a copy of fox.txt. And then we're going to name the file of, we're going to name the backup. We're going to call it backup two. That's it. That's all that needs to be done to make a copy. And as you can see, fox.backup2 is right there. Very easy, very simple, and a lot fewer steps than using the graphical file manager.